Hi everyone, William Ha here again from Elite Gen Magazine, and this week I'm driving the all-new 2024 Lexus RX 450H Plus. So this vehicle is unique because it's the first ever plug-in hybrid for the RX line. So the RX is Lexus's best seller by far, and you can get it as a plug-in hybrid vehicle for the very first time. So the main benefit of having a plug-in hybrid over a conventional hybrid is the fact that of course you can plug in and because you can plug in you've got a bigger battery and it enables a lot more all electric range so for this vehicle uh, Lexus says that you can get up to 60 kilometers of all electric range now that's under very ideal conditions I, I think more realistically you'll you'll be able to get about 50 kilometers of all electric range if you keep it fully charged and to own a plug-in hybrid vehicle, I think that's one of the most important things, just to be very diligent in charging uh, overnight. And if you do that, you'll be able to save a lot of gas over time, especially if you do a lot of short trips around town. You're not going too far. You're, you know, maybe you're dropping your kids off to school and picking them up, doing some errands around town. And you can drive uh, pretty much uh, all on electric power and you can save a lot of gas over time. So that's really the main benefit of having the plug-in hybrid. Now, it's got a bigger battery, of course, um, providing more range. It's got an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery. And the engine is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. And what's good about, again, uh, with the plug-in hybrid is the fact that you don't have to worry about range anxiety. So if you run out of electric charge, you always have that gas engine there to back you up. And you can go anywhere you want anytime without having to worry about charging the vehicle. So that's what's great about having a plug-in hybrid. Now, this vehicle starts at just over $90,000 Canadian, so it's steep for a lot of people. And a lot of people will also say that, oh, you know, it's so expensive. Uh, with that much money, I can buy a, a BMW or a Benz. So that opinion comes from a place of brand snobbery. But really, you know, Lexus kind of has carved out its own niche. Uh, this vehicle has its own identity. You know, people who have $100,000 to spend uh, you know, they'll buy what they want to buy, right? And a lot of people like the Lexus brand because of the engineering excellence and the reputation for reliability. And they've been doing electrified vehicles for quite a long time, right? So there's that trust. And, and you know, this brand's very desirable because uh, for better or worse, thieves are targeting these cars, for crying out loud. So I do think that if somebody likes this brand and they want a plug-in hybrid, uh, you know, this is a very good vehicle to get. It drives very smoothly. It has 304 total horsepower so it doesn't sound like a lot in today's day and age but i assure you it's more than enough uh, to keep up with traffic and to uh, merge onto the highway confidently it drives very very smoothly especially being a, an electrified vehicle uh, most manufacturers will pay more attention to soundproofing so uh, it drives very well very smooth especially when it's in all electric mode it, it's almost soothing and and uh, it's like an oasis from the the chaos of the world when you're inside this vehicle and you're driving it so it's not particularly sporty. It doesn't handle like a Cayenne or a BMW X5, uh, but it's competent enough that you won't think anything weird of the driving experience. It's it's more smooth and more luxurious than it than it is sporty. And yeah, it's it drives very well. So I'm going to go into more detail on the styling, the interior, the back seat, and then I'll share my final thoughts on this vehicle as well. So please keep watching. Let's talk about the exterior design. So this is the side view and it's clean. It looks premium with just the right amount of dramatics like that sweep you see there that goes over the rear wheels. I think it looks nice and it's not too extreme. Lexus has always been good when it comes to paint. And I like the fact that there's that little swoop there on the rear window. We come up a little bit closer. We'll look at it from the front side. You can see there's more lines there just above the door handles and the hood is nicely sculpted. And the front end looks a little bit weird to some people. It kind of looks like it's wearing a helmet, but I think it's a unique design touch and I don't think it's radical enough to deter loyal RX buyers or people who are fans of the Lexus brand. But the hood is nicely styled. Everything's very cohesive, which is what I like. It's got good headlights and if we come a little bit closer the only thing I don't like is the fact that the bottom trim pieces there are not painted whereas the fender garnishes above the wheels are painted so that's a little bit of an odd touch but 
The rear has vented disc brakes, which is good. I think a vehicle like this probably needs it, given the fact that it's heavier being a plug-in hybrid. And it's got these L-shaped designs as well on the sides of the taillights, which is kind of neat. And then you can see there that there's an LED strip that runs across the rear tailgate, and then the Lexus is spelled out as a script that looks more upscale, I think. The rear fenders aren't too wide, it's just right. Again, a very nice cohesive design. Everything comes together really nicely. You have the satin finish on the roof rails. And it's a really nice design overall. So here's a view from the driver's seat. So one thing about the steering wheel, you got really nice soft leather and you've got these little wood inserts on top here along with the bottom here. And what's good about this design is that since this is a heated steering wheel, it won't feel cold if this whole section was all wood. There's leather behind it, which stays heated during the winter. So it's a good design. And this is your digital instrument cluster. And you have a large screen here. And this is your wireless phone charger. And this is pretty deep. You've got a height adjustable cup holder. So there's two here. The, the height adjustable one is in the front. So if you have a deep cup, you just have to press down on this. Got my Tim Hortons cup here and and that that'll help with taller containers and then if you want it at the regular height it can accommodate that as well so that's a nice design the storage in here it's really deep so it's really useful it can open from it can it's it's double hinged so you can open it like this or you can open it like that as well so the front passenger can have access if he or she needs and in some cases you know if you're parked and you want to get something from in here you can also do it from the passenger side you don't have to walk all the way around so this is a really useful feature but it's really really nice in here you have this nice kind of pale brown color lexus calls it peppercorn there's these nice suede inserts that go with the leather and these suede inserts kind of have like a an l design that runs across and then you have this unique looking matte wood pattern it's subtle it doesn't really stand out too much and there's ambient lighting you can kind of see it's during the daylight right now but it's really nicely designed all the materials are nice uh, the buttons feel very high quality they're not flimsy smooth when you turn these knobs and i like the fact that there's still physical switches for your trip meter so you know it's easy to adjust you don't have to or not easy to adjust, but rather easy to, uh, you know, toggle between your different counts. And then there's three settings for the memory seats. So this is the 14 inch center screen. It's a touch screen that's very intuitive to use. And even though you don't have physical buttons for your heat and ventilated seats in your steering wheel, it's really not an issue. Once you see it there, you just need to touch it and you don't have to dive into a bunch of menu selections like on certain screens. I happen to be in a screen here where you can turn on or off your driver assist and safety features. So it's nice to have everything on one screen and you can set them accordingly. If you want to go near climate, you can, your climate controls, you have the ability to turn on uh, additional features. So there's a front windshield wiper park de-icer along with um, air being directed only to occupied seats and then you can close this and then you also have a menu item where it sh it shows all the frequently accessed features uh, that that you frequently use so this is helpful in terms of just getting to certain features quicker as opposed to diving into a bunch of uh, different menu items so very good let's talk about the rx 450 h plus at night so you can see there it's got excellent Headlights, really bright, and it has automatic cornering lights as well that turn on when you turn the steering wheel. And this is how the screen looks like at night. And you can see the ambient lighting on the front passenger side of the dash. And the front passenger also gets memory seating settings as well. If we go up front, or rather up top, you can see that there's touch sensitive lights, no physical buttons. and this vehicle has electronic door latches, so there is a safety mechanism built in. If the electronic portion doesn't work, you can pull on the latch, but all you need to do is press on that switch that you see there, 
and it opens the door. And when you open the door, there's a lighted Lexus script. And there's also lighting in the storage pocket here, which is a nice feature that not many vehicles have. So that's useful for finding things at night. And then the switches here are lit up as well. So this is how the screen looks like when I turn on the engine. And there's also a lot of storage space in the center console as well. You have a total of four USB ports, pretty deep storage, and then the wireless charger is there as well. So I'm in the back seat right now, and it's very, very comfortable. There's tons of leg room. Uh, the seat cushion's really high, so you get good thigh support. You have a manually operated sunshade, so that provides both privacy and it can block out the sun if you need it. Nice suede inserts. They feel very soft. In front of me, there's a storage pocket behind both front seats. And this vehicle also has heated and ventilated outboard uh, seats for the rear passengers. So those are nice bonuses, along with uh, the ability to uh, set your temperature. So this is a tri-zone automatic climate control. You got two USB-C ports as well for charging your devices. And if I pull down the armrest, I've got two cup holders. And I've also got a little storage compartment behind the cup holders, which is versatile and good to have if you want to store little odds and ends. Headroom is pretty decent considering that there's a big panoramic sunroof and the panoramic sunroof extends uh, back here to the rear passenger space, which, which is nice. The lights, you don't have any lights here. They're actually just um, up here in the middle behind the panoramic sunroof. And the seat, the, the electric, it's, it's electric, so this, this rear uh, seat back, so you can adjust and recline to your liking. The switch is just uh, uh, down here. Otherwise, it's very comfortable. It's very grand back here. The only thing is that it'll cost you over 100 grand to, to get this vehicle, but very well equipped. I even like the power windows. As it goes up, it slows down, so it's a nice little touch. You got a coat hanger here. That's really all I have to say about the rear. It's really comfortable, it's nice. I think it'll be good for long trips. There's also one good feature. So I'm sitting behind a driver's seat right now, but for a passenger next to me, if he or she wanted more leg room and there was no one sitting in the front, there are actually switches here uh, from where I'm sitting where you can move the front passenger seat forward and backward to enable more leg room. So that's a nice convenient feature as well. Of course, we have to talk about the cargo space, given that it's important for families. So you can see that there's hands-free operation with just a swipe of your foot. It's pretty spacious in this cargo space. You have switches for operating the rear seat backs. As you can see there, they're power operated. They work pretty smoothly. There's a 12 volt power outlet, and then there's a concealed hook as well if you wanna hang bags. And if we move to the passenger side, you have a household outlet, which is useful if you have power hungry devices you wanna use. And there's a light on each side, which is useful at night. And also there's storage, there's a storage compartment below the floorboard. So this space is normally reserved for putting the level one charger, but of course you can put whatever you want there if you wanna conceal it. And speaking of concealing, there's a cargo privacy cover that tilts down as well. And there are also switches on the second row where the seats are, and you can operate the power fold down from there as well. You can even operate these seat backs from the driver's seat at the touch screen with a but quick touch of a button, you can fold them down. This is a really good feature. I don't, I, it's the first time I've seen this feature on any vehicle, so very convenient. You can put them back up as well without having to get out of your seat. And there's 40, 20, 40 split folding. So once you have all the seats down, if you wanna put the seats back up, not all of it, but you just wanna fold down the middle, you all you have to do is pull on this latch, and then from the switch, you 
press to bring the seat backs back up and then that middle portion will stay down and this is useful if you want to hold skis or any long items and if you want to fold it back up it's very easy you just pull up and then lock it in place This RX has a really cool camera system as well. You can see here there's a transparent view of what's under the vehicle and that can be helpful in some situations. And it even shows the vehicle moving in real time when you're crawling at low speeds. And when you're backing up, it also provides audible and visual alerts. So with all these aids, there's really no excuse to hit anything. And before you back out of your parking spot or pull out, you can also produce a 360 degree camera view just to see what's around you and sometimes this can be helpful in case there are obstacles or pedestrians that you don't see. And my favorite feature of the camera system is a camera washer which is really useful in Canada especially during winters and when you operate the rear wiper washer it cleans the camera as well. Touching this pad will call up a menu that shows up on your head-up display and this pad allows you to customize certain settings so it can be a quick shortcut so there's a left and right pad on a steering wheel and you can customize the settings to correspond to certain features so in this case i might want to set one of the buttons so it can be a shortcut for me to get into sport mode if i need quick acceleration and it's as easy as that so it's a neat feature it allows you to drive without taking your eyes off the road on all electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles, you can set a charging schedule so that way the charging will automatically start at a time that you set it to. And this is useful because you can save a lot of money if you set the charging to charge at night during non-peak hours when uh, the utility companies charge less. So you go into a charging schedule here, you can add a schedule, you can set your time accordingly. So we'll say start at that time you go okay and then you can select the dates that you want and it's useful to have days right because monday to friday might be your work days and then uh, saturday and sundays are your weekends and you might want a different uh, schedule so that's it you got an electronic shifter knob it's kind of weird you have to kind of go down and for and sorry left and downward to get into drive you have to go left and up to go into reverse and it's just a little quirk you also get a digital rear camera which is useful if you want to see a wider view of what's behind you so the digital instrument cluster shows you when the brake lights are on as you can see there so there's a good reason for that so because this vehicle is a plug-in hybrid when you decelerate that is when you take your foot off the gas pedal it's going to coast and because it has regenerative braking the vehicle is going to help you slow down and sometimes when the regenerative braking is strong the brake lights will automatically come on just to notify drivers behind you that you're slowing. So this is a good safety feature that Toyota's built in and I suspect the reason why they have the brake lights on the instrument cluster is to let the driver know uh, when the brake lights are on when you're decelerating. So here are my final thoughts on this Lexus RX 450H Plus. It's Lexus's best selling vehicles so I think they've built up uh, quite a lot of trust and loyalty among people who drive this brand or have owned an RX. And I think it's a, it's a good move. Toyota, I think Toyota slash Lexus, I think have a really good electrification strategy in terms of the fact that they're not going all in on full electrification, like most car companies, because here in Ontario, at least uh, with, uh, and I think for much of Canada, maybe except for, for British Columbia and some parts of Quebec, uh, you know, there really isn't the infrastructure, the public infrastructure, at least to charge uh, vehicles. And because of that, 
you know, the fear of range anxiety is, is a big thing if, if, if you don't have strong infrastructure, right? So, uh, you know, in general, EVs cost a lot more money. Uh, not that this one is cheap, but I just think that from a convenience standpoint and a readiness standpoint, buying a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid is still the, the best solution in our current times in Canada. So this one's a plug-in hybrid, so you get a lot more all-electric range. You get, you know, they say 60 kilometers, but you probably get more close to 50. But it's good for someone who wants to ease into eventual electrification. They want to save some gas, especially if you're, you're, you do a lot of short trips or you have a short commute. Having a plug-in hybrid is really useful because you're going to, as long as you're diligent with charging every night, you'll be able to do most of your kilometers uh, using just electricity. So that's going to help a lot. So there really weren't a lot of negatives to point out about this vehicle. You know, it all comes down to people's preferences. If you want something that's smooth, luxurious, and quiet, and you're indifferent or you don't care too much about sporty driving, this is the vehicle for you. So it's a little bit heavier because it's got the bigger battery. So it's about 4,600 pounds, but with the heavier battery, you do uh, get a more planted vehicle. And this ve this car handles decently. Like it's not sporty and it it's not tight and, and, you know, the steering is kind of numb, but it's still good enough. And I think uh, once you put it into sport mode, you feel a little bit more uh, of a tight steering, but for the most part, it's still pretty numb. But this vehicle is for people who like smoothness and luxury, and this vehicle delivers in spades. So I hope this review helped. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, please give it a like. Please continue to follow me. I'll be driving more premium vehicles and posting more reviews in the new year, in 2024. So thanks again.